Welcome back YouTube. Am I in? Yeah, loud and clear, mic check, mic check. Right, welcome back guys. Special guest today. You've seen him before on the channel, Mr. Oscar Young. Now, your classic physique prof pro, 10 weeks after his show, so Oscar is rebuilding his volume back up, which is what you will have seen me do after my show. Oscar's kind of in the process of that now, whereas I'm kind of back to full tilt. Providing Mark's feeling on point, which I'm feeling pretty fantastic, it's going to be back to full training volume. You're going to have to bleep that bit out. You're going to have to go boom. Otherwise, we'll get basically any profanities. Well, Gaz is going to have to basically cut it because apparently YouTube is getting a bit picky, which is not the most ideal, so sort it out. Anyway, today's session, I am going to start on my lat work today on my both my push days, Jordan actually told me to remove the, 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 the wire raise I was doing before uh, and kind of just place extra, extra delta volume at the end. But today, I know if I was to do that, coming back off a deload when I'm feeling good, I'm feeling strong, I'm probably gonna overdo the load in the first exercise. So it's more sort of a precautionary measure not to take the too much and, uh, and stay a bit safer whilst we'll load the movements up. The session's gonna go as follows. Obviously, I'm gonna do a little bit of that work, the pullover work. That is just addressing more sort of ability stuff. You do feel better in your presses. I do anyway, so that's why I do it. I'm not gonna stop doing that. And then it would have been straight into low incline prime press, but instead, we are gonna do the wire race today just to make sure the joints are moving, open up nicely. Then go into the incline prime press, Atlantis shoulder press, prime dip, and then it's gonna be prime pet deck, prime lateral, and then some arm work, which is going to be a single arm push down and then overhead stuff. All the compound stuff is going to be two working sets per exercise. The wide raise, three sets, and the side lateral uh, is going to be three sets as well on the prime. Personally, I think I do need more delt. And to be honest, you can never have big enough delts. Exactly. So, you know, if you can get away with it, put it in and get huge delts, get some width in there. Uh, so that's pretty much got planned for the session. Now, today, I really want to dig into why we're using specific movements for the chest work, even the shoulder press that we are going to be using. It's not your typical just above the head movement. It does kind of tie into your chest uh, and clavicle in particular. So today I kind of want to go for a sequence that, that I use with push sessions, uh, which is going to be four exercises to kind of torch the whole pec, the, the entire portion of your chest. Your mid, obviously upper pec, even the clavicle, which is the right at the top, tying into your front delt and the lower pec as well. So I kind of want to dig into that and that's going to be the kind of theme for the video. Anything else you want to add, Oscar? No, perfect, perfect, like I said. This is super interesting because you can watch us raw just build up and consult each other about what sort of work we're going to do because it's important and like Jordan's been ranting about it, Cooper's been ranting about it, train to your needs. That's why we sat here and we're backing and forth in. Communication is important. Where am I at? I'm sort of 10, 9.5 weeks for sure. So my volume has to reflect my ability to recover. And I'm seeing Kubus come back from the deload, so we're going to meet somewhere in the middle. And then there's some things that will take three sets, I'll take two, some things will take two sets, I'll take one, so that this does not affect or disrupt my week as I go forward. Yeah, very, very uber excited for this. Kuba mentioned something about um, the different portions of the peg, which is a very, very sort of common ask question. When we go to the prime, that is going to tie, that, that's going to hit the majority of the pain. Just because of the load exposure, a lot of fibers will come to play. But obviously, as we come to the Atlantis press, then it's almost above the head, but it's not. So there's this motion where the bicep comes closer to the face, and at that point, then you bias the clavicle. So you have your costal, sternal, and clavicle portions. And by the end of the session, and I'll be done. So yeah, looking forward to it. And uh, let's see how it goes. Exercise number one. Lying cuffed wire raise, an excellent exercise when you are looking to not only improve your mobility, but also get huge delts. You can do this variation lying on a bench or any other way that you wish to do it, but my preference is just lying on the floor, just for ease. I don't like to waste too much energy in the gym. So again, if your gym allows it, lay on the floor, get your cuffs on, get after it.
Yeah. Because I'm so used to these exercises after doing them for like 18 weeks. Once I've done my initial set and a little warm up, I'll literally take one more set on this and I'm ready to go. Why? I don't need to feel the movement out. I'm very familiar with it. That one set allows me to just get in that rhythm, get in the groove, get my joints warm, get the muscle warm. I'm ready to attack my set. I am a massive fan of sticking to set programming over a longer period of times. If you are very careful with your load progressions, you can stay with the same movements for 15, 20, 30 weeks plus. They'll be able to progress them over that time whilst keeping quality very, very high. But unfortunately, to some people, it doesn't really sound like much fun. People want to do, you know, the new exercise or the new movements or the new machine that's coming in the gym. For me, I seek enjoyment out of progression with my physique and the gym floor performance. So I'm happy literally being like a dog and chasing that bone with progressions and certain lifts to the death. Write that down. Kuba. Awesome. Yes. Because I lean forward and I try and press through and depress my scap in. So the so dip for me. Yeah, the dip the dip for me is mainly lower pec work. For you, you need more triceps. So if we do if we do a tricep isolation movement, you're not gonna pre-exhaust it. But fill your tricep full of blood before you go into a compound. The intent's going to be more towards the tricep rather than the pec. Know your bias, guys. There's various different movements that you can use to target different body parts, despite what people kind of think. Just because you're doing a dip, it's a tricep movement. Not necessarily. It depends how you actually do it and what you utilize it for, which I will go through with you shortly. Okay. number one for my favorite chest training sequence incline converging chest press what I mean by converging is a chest press that moves in this plane of motion now why a converging chest press when trying to train the pec the function of your pec is to do this not this that is more your tricep if we can use a machine that mimics the function of our pec it will give you the biggest bang for your butt when trying to actually specifically target your chest when you are pressing. So remember guys, pressing straight up and down is not the most ideal challenge of pack. Pressing in a converging movement like this machine is ideal. Now, most gyms have a converging chest press. And if you don't have a converging chest press, use the dumbbells, simple as that. As X has in one, incline, targeting the upper pec, upper shelf of the chest fibers. The reason why I favor this machine over a dumbbell, for example, the resistance of this piece does not drop off. With a dumbbell, once you get here, there's no resistance. It's more heavy at just the length and range. Where with this machine, the way we're loading it, which is relevant towards this, is it overloads in the stretch, which again is the portion which we do get the biggest bang for our buck with chase training. But the, the resistance does not drop off all the way for entirety of the rep. So we always make sure that we're fully allowed to lock out here as on a dumbbell press for example we would stay just shy of that lockout so this is the main reason why I do favor machines over three weight in some cases 
So, a lot of people will ask me, how do I build up to my presses? Pressing especially, just like a squat pattern or any, any other heavy compound lift, I think you have to take more time and be a little bit cautious with your warm-up sets and feeder sets. The last thing you want to do is get to your top working set and not quite be ready to attack your set or not really build yourself up to the point where you're comfortable in the heavier load. So it's definitely a balance where you have to do enough work to safely take you to your heaviest load without bringing about as much fatigue. For me, first couple of sets, working a higher rep range, and then the following sets after that, which may be two to three, maybe even four sets, following after that, it's doubles, trebles. And again, if I need more reps, I'll take them. If I don't, I do less and I take my set. So always go feel. If you need more work, take more work. And if you don't quite feel safe, work in high rep range. Do not just be married to one idea. Training is very fluid. It can go up and down, and you can still be able to progress at a different pace and a different level. Here we go. So this will be my last warm up set now. See how this feels, and then we take it from there. Here we go. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yep. Beautiful. Yeah. Last one. Sweet. Come on, Oscar. Easy. Both sets here, I actually use the same load. The beauty of these machines, you can adjust the resistance profile. So, set number one was loaded mainly in the middle and top, which means that the middle peg pretty much overloads the short and range quite heavily in these pieces. So, full contractile range, where you are arguably the weakest. So, what I've done here on the second set, manipulating the resistance profile, adding weight at the top peg, which overloads the length and range, the stretch, the most where you are the strongest, allowing me to hit the same load, but redistributed when it comes to resistance profile to match the strength curve of our chest. Right, so moving on to exercise number two. Now, this will tie in your front delt and the clavicle, which is the very, very, very high upper portion of your pec that ties into your front delt. This is possibly the best exercise to actually target that portion of your chest. The way we kind of move throughout the workout is mid, to incline oh. press, which that pretty much was, it was a long climb press, which targets the mid and incline portion of the pec. Now, the very top portion of the pec, which is the clavicle, the front delt, and then uh, I don't move on to the next, but now, exercise number two, which is uh, the Atlantic shoulder press. Now, for us, any machine that is really going above the head makes most sense for me to actually work with a neutral grip if the option is there to do so. It puts your arm path at a much, natural, much more natural arm path which will allow you to sit stronger and less risk of an injury as well, moving in that plane. <laughs> the 
So, so as you will see, as we move here, you can literally see the upper portion of my pack coming up as I drive through. So that's the whole target of this exercise. It's a, it's a great, great machine. I really like it. Seven. Here we go. Lock it. Beautiful. I'll take the same. Just take the blocks from. Come on now. Three, two, let's go. Come on now. Easy. Good. 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 Yes, come on. Come on. Yes. Easy. Easy. Beautiful reps. Uh, Beautiful reps. Beautiful reps. Thank you. Thank you. And that shows you, I don't get on with crying. And it's more of a mental thing. Just because of how wide the handles are. So, I'm almost defeated before I start the set. Because of this, I just don't feel safe here. And the way we loaded it as well, it's very heavy in the length. End. Don't get me wrong, that's where Loading it that way, that's where you get the most value because when you load a fully lengthened muscle, that's where there's the most hypertrophy. But um, yeah, it was messing up with my mind a bit. I'm glad I was able to get that set. Game on. All right, no numbers, just reps. No numbers, just quality reps. that last rep but there was no way I was going to drop it <laughs> there's no I was going to give in a little bit scrappy but in my opinion every single rep apart from that last rep was pretty much immaculate so is it beneficial taking a rep that is a little bit effy but still safe I believe it is I don't think you can truly push past to a new boundary without sometimes having to really dig in to take the rep progressions however obviously that was 12 reps that 12th rep is not getting logged. Only the quality reps are getting logged. So be mindful of that, guys. Make sure you write that down as well, because I am. Oh, Mark. Yes, come on! Yeah. Complete that fucking rep, motherfucker! Very nice. Nice. Very nice. I think that prime incline press needs to go now. Yeah. I can't get comfortable on it for some reason. Bro. What do you think? My, my head's gone on it. I think I'm at that stage now where I think the same as you. I'm like, is something going to go? Yeah. No, it's just it's like, um, and again, it does get to that point in the lift because we've, we've ran it for 18 weeks now and we've shifted some big loads on it, but I'm at a point now in my progress on that piece where I don't feel comfortable or safe. I'm going to have a little think and then it's going to be either an option between a mid to high incline smith yes. and mid smith or the converging Atlantis press, incline press, I, I, which I is great. Go, I would go converging Atlantis yeah. press because you can take yeah. this. You've already got um, yeah, a and I've got I've got the low speed. incline smith on the other yeah. session as well. Yeah. Yeah. For, for the amount of kit you got in here, yeah. it's just... 
you should just hop from one to the next. But that's like what I said, guys. I just didn't feel safe. And when you're nervous, when you're shifting this load, you can't afford to think of anything else. You just want to be locked in. The moment you don't feel safe, it takes away from the actual lift. Moving on to the next exercise, guys. The next exercise is a dip. A dip is a fantastic movement that can be biased towards your tricep or your pec, depending on how you use it. Personally, I need more pec. I'm using the tricep dip to target the lower portion of the pec. Through adjusting my position, leaning forward, and aiming to always, always get as much range of motion as possible, kind of the stretch, getting some full traction at the scap. And then as I drive down, guys, what you'll notice is I'm almost allowing my shoulders to go in slight depression and I'm fully contracting my pec as I go into a fully shortened range, so fully contracted position. You can use the dips for a variety of purposes, guys, uh, should you wish to do so. Write it down. <laughs> Oh yeah, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I love this machine, absolutely love this machine. Three, two, up, up mama, keep in. Yes. Is that nine? Definitely. Fucking yes. Oscar! Beautiful! Take it! Take it, take it. All the way, that's you, that's you, that's you! Perfect. I love the thing. Change resistance. Take. Got nothing else to say. Beautiful. Push. Moving on to our fourth and final exercise for my favorite chest training movements is going to be the pec deck. Now, we've done all, all, we've done all our compound work. Pec deck is a machine that allows you to truly isolate your pec. Like I mentioned earlier, the function of pec is to literally do this, abduction, adduction of your upper arm. I'm not gonna go into you know, the fancy words that people like to use with you know, abduction, adduction, humorous, it's like, you don't need to say that. Just keep it nice and plain and simple so the audience can understand. But anyway, without waffling on, pec deck allows you to train your pec in isolation. So it really does make sense to finish off on that movement to really put the cherry on top when it comes to targeting your whole pec development. Now, on this machine in particular, I'm not trying to target any division of the pec. I'm just trying to work with my full range of motion of the pec, really making sure I control every little millimeter of the movement and get the last little bit out of my pack to finish off it. Should I pass this for you? No, the handle, bro. Fuck the handle. I get to a point where load gets to a point where yeah. the handles just don't feel safe. Yeah, 100%. So I'm just going to keep it as strict as possible. No, the handle. Okay. loading where it's like yeah it feels better with the handle but you don't have the same stability you know what I mean so when it does get to a certain load it's like 
you almost feel a lot safe when you when you're locked in. It feels so much safer. That's so just that, lock that, in that, and that 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 is a very important point. Are you with me? So what gets you from A to B is not necessarily what gets you from B to C. So you see at the start, Kubo was using D handles just to make sure the movement was accurate as as possible. But I guess to a point where the load exposure, which is a priority, gets high, so we go and lose the D handles so that it doesn't take away from loading. Yeah. Otherwise, if he uses the D handle in the same load, oh yeah, you don't feel as safe. No, no way near. Very important point. Right down. I love it. Five grams of MPS Max. Like I mentioned before, I have my MPS Max halfway through the session because it is a full protein serving. It's got casing head rail set as well, so it's far superior than any other EA on the market, in my opinion. I uh, tend to mix that with 250 ml water, and I pretty much have it towards the mid to three quarters of my session, which is kind of leaves my protein feedings very even across the day. Train by GB.com, Kuba 10 feeders can come to get yours. <laughs> come on! <laughs> come on! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Nice! I love it. Oh yeah! I love it. Oh, that was beautiful. So, that pretty much finishes off our chest portion of the push workout. I will do more separate explanations for arm training and delt training specific, but today I want to cover chest in particular for you all because we all love having a massive chest. Obviously mine's still not the best, but it's coming. so much tuning in if you enjoyed the video like share subscribe comment below um, Oscar is now 10 weeks into his off season so yes. he will be competing at the end of this year yep. uh, aiming for which shot to begin with probably Romania again and Tunisia yeah so make sure you follow along as Oscar's definitely going to bring a completely different package of in this last prep especially his physique really really came through a lot of tweaks to his posing getting his vacuum in which I think he's still continuing to work on. Once you've been able to get the vacuum once, I think he only gets better from there. So I think now only ways up for Oscar, especially you now he's found his groove and found the category that he wants to really fit in the most. And arguably that is the category that his physique also fits in the best as well, in my opinion, because he has got the beautiful structure, flow, shape, lines, tiny waist, and he's got a substantial room to go as well in his weight cap as a competitive pro which I, I always say this to people, it's like, you're not a true classic body unless you've got that room to push there. And I think Oscar probably, once you get in like, the condition that you know he can get in, yes. you're probably gonna have like, how much, three, four kilo to go? Three, four kilo to go yeah, and three, four kilo of stage weight a is a huge amount a of weight. Three, four kilo, adding that onto physique in that sort of condition is crazy changes. Make sure you pay attention guys, watch the socials, and we will have much more content coming your way as well. Uh, so as always, thank you so much, guys. Thank Take you. care. Thank Peace you. out for now, guys. Hello. Boom.